Hey everybody, it's Karen from Waterfall Acrylics. How are you? Long time no see. Uh, took almost a week to uh, go home to Pittsburgh, see family for Thanksgiving. It was lovely. And then came home to like a small little flood in my uh, one of my bathrooms where the flange. Who knew what a flange was? A flange is some component of your toilet. So we have one upstairs here and one downstairs. They're lined up. And the water was very considerate in that most of it dripped right into the other toilet from the ceiling. So I had to spend a couple days with the plumber here, blah, blah, blah. You don't, you guys don't care. <laughs> but I'm back now. I'm taking off my rings, trying to. Um, today is experiment day. I'm going to use the Shelly Art Pouring Medium um, and combine it with the Dutch pour technique. I think I mentioned in the last video, they're very similar. They're both puddle pours. So why not try to blow out a Shelly Art uh, pouring medium mix and uh, see what happens. So um, I've never done this before. It could be a total fail. I'm gonna post it anyway. I'm gonna do a quick little bloom on a five inch round just because I have, um, I didn't use my golden fluid acrylics today. I used Arteza uh, metallics these guys here and I'll list all the colors so I have two paint with the pouring medium which I haven't done before and I changed uh, my cell activator instead of being titanium white it is carbon black so all kinds of new stuff let's get to it so first off so there's the clock that we're going to uh, blow out with my trusty hair dryer but let's set that off a second I want to make sure that the carbon black um, actually makes cells. So it is mixed um, an ounce of carbon black paint uh, with three ounces of American Floetrol. And then I added three drops of the Minwax uh, wood conditioner um, to help create cells. My base is a new paint today. Oh gosh, it's giant thing. It's Glidden Essentials um, and Semi-Gloss, just plain old white. That stuff right there, which I have put into my trusty little squirt bottle for ease of use. And then uh, colors, all these are Teza Metallics. I'll list the colors up on the screen. I don't know about this one. This one, I think I'm going to put him on the bench and just go with these three. Um, try not to get too much paint in my hair. Just gonna make a little puddle. I got new gloves that a guy named Mike turned me on to. They're called Framar. And I think my um, hairstylist uses these too, but they're, I got them off of Amazon. He's like, buy the black. I'm like, man, yeah, I'm buying pink. <laughs> so I got pink ones and I love them because they come in small, medium, large, and extra large. So these are the small because I'm kind of fine boned and they fit me like a glove. <laughs> That's so silly. Uh, so hopefully this video won't be too, too long because I have to run off in a little bit. Guess where? To the ice skating rink once again. So, all right. So there's our puddle. I'm gonna do this just to help it get to the edges. I have my sides taped about three quarters of the way around to make a nice little lip on the wood. Normally, this wood, these wood rounds, you get them at Michael's, I would gesso this. I would gesso it, and then I would sand it, and I would gesso it again, and then I would sand it again. So a lot of prep goes into these little guys, um, just so that it's really super smooth and that the wood grain doesn't show. So I did not obviously do that today because I figured it's just an experiment and I don't know if it'll turn out. Now watch, since I didn't, I'm gonna have a cute little pour with the wood showing, the wood grain showing. Maybe not, we'll see what happens. All right, colors. So what is this? I just wanna know, kinda of know what this is. This is Pink tulip right here. So I'm gonna put down some pink tulip. And plop some right there in the middle. Followed by 
What is this? Pearl, copper, gold. Pearl, copper, gold. Now pick a color there, Orteza. Is it copper or is it gold? So I'll put some of that. And then finally, we will use some pearl amaranth red. Fancy. Very fancy. And we'll put some of that right there. And hopefully, if this does sew up or lace up or whatever it wants to do, the black will make it dramatic. So this is our test. Test something, something small before we go to the clock. Now the clock, I deliberately did not gesso or kills because these are the um, clock kits you get at Target in the craft aisle. And if you do, maybe gesso it, but do not use kills. It will warp on you because they are pressed wood um, in two places. And I found that you can tell on the sides, if you go to kills these, they tend to split. Just a little tip. All right. I don't have my hair thing, do I? Let me look on my table for a second. No, I don't see it lying around. All right, try not to get so much in my hair. Let's give this a blow and see if anything reacts. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, it reacted. Quite a bit, actually. What I've been doing lately is when I have either the black or white in the center like that, I tend to give that a soft blow right in the middle just to get some cells to pop up in the middle. Nothing hard. Hmm, doesn't seem to be working today. We're gonna let this sit. Let me, I'm gonna re-blow out this one petal. Hold on. That's better. All right, so let me come up so you guys can see that. And I'm gonna let that sit for a second just so it can all collect in the middle because we want it to move in unison. So we'll leave that sit. But that's looking really promising for the clock. So I'm gonna go ahead and prep the clock while we're waiting for that one little bloom. So, oh gosh. So what we're gonna do is take my squeeze bottle make my big base and I'm probably just going to spread this around with my finger because we don't need it to be puffy everywhere so let's just do this run it on my sides I feel like I'm resining when I resin I never use the tool I use uh, safety equipment and then I use gloves and I do this with the resin with my finger. I don't know why. I just like to, the feel of rubbing it in. All right, so we have some coverage. Kind of make it even. Let that sit a second. And hopefully level out just a little bit. And then I'm gonna make Take my squeeze bottle again, and we're gonna make a line of white, and then we'll put the colors in the lines, and then blow it out like a Dutch pour, and see uh, how amenable the pouring medium is um, to that. So while that's sitting there, let's bring over Little Mr. Round. The colors are pretty. So that's what it looks like. Um, see how it all looks in the middle. So now I should be able to move this like this and have everything move in unison and just stretch out some of the petals. I'm gonna take some of that out. I do like the one, I really like the um, white lacing. I'm a sucker for that. 
and come off here just to get rid of some paint and bring it back. But I really do like the uh, the drama of the black uh, with these colors. You got these soft spring colors and then ba bam. And take a little off this way, a little more because I don't like that one blob. That's right there, bye bye. And then bring it back. Oh my gosh, it's all shimmery already and it's not even dry. Really pretty. Ta-da! So that worked out really well, the little test. So that's good to know. So hopefully we'll have success using the hair dryer. Oh, I forgot to bring up stuff for show and tell. Next time. That's because I feel a little bit rushed today. And while I'm layering colors, I want to tell you guys a quick story. And let me preface the story by saying I am normally not a law breaker. I don't go around trespassing. Um, I don't steal. I'm a good little citizen. I follow civic law and moral laws. However, while we were in Pittsburgh, <laughs> on our last day, I decided to show my daughter where I grew up. And it's, you know, I had visions like in a movie where you go and you knock on the door and somebody answers and they invite you in. And maybe they've, you know, redecorated and rearranged the furniture. And you're like, oh, look at the couch. It looks nice there. You know what I mean? That's what I had in my head. So, unfortunately, <laughs> we go and the house, is it, it needs to be condemned. So that was our first clue that things weren't well. The second thing was um, the landscaping had all collapsed. Like, I don't know, it looked like an earthquake. It hit the back of the house and uh, the patio was gone. The backyard was sunk in. When I say sunk in, I mean about Oh gosh, six feet. It was incredible. So we knock on the door and we knock on the door and we knock on the door and there's no answer. And I'm like, well, come on, we'll go see the backyard. And we'll trespass in the backyard. I'm like, and we lived on the edge of a park. Um, and I kind of wanted to see the old ball field, which is now all woods. The ball field's gone. And we're marveling at the damage. Um, created by whatever sinkhole or whatever that hit that side of my street because two houses fell over the hill, two others were condemned, and two others had to be torn down. So I'm talking like significant uh, movement of the earth. So anyway, we look at the backyard and we see all kinds of deer droppings and the woods are, have taken over and you know, mother, is this the same color? Oh my gosh, these are too similar, I, th I feel. Let's stop, let's uh, let's throw in this uh, purple color. Come on off the bench. Anyway, so we're done ooing and aahing in this shock and disbelief of the backyard. And we decide to knock on the door one more time. And this time I opened up the screen door, because that's what we were knocking on. I opened up the screen door and knocked on the wood door and the door opened. And like it flung open because it wasn't really hinged properly. And I was in such shock of what I saw that we walked in. So we were bad and we did trespass. And inside was, how do I describe it? Like something out of a, a 1970s movie that was like turned into a hunting lodge. So like... The original carpet from when I grew up was still there and like totally gross with black mold. The first thing we saw was like a giant box full of like axes and other like dangerous equipment. Um, one room had, and I'm not exaggerating, about, I don't know, 30 or 40 deer antlers. 
Another room had a real bearskin rug with the head attached on the floor. Another room that should have been like a bedroom had um, nothing but a weight set, you know, and beer cans and cigarette butts and, and just awfulness. <laughs> so it freaked out my daughter. I was freaked out. We got the hell out of Dodge. And then um, Chloe talked about it all the way back. Like, I can't believe you used to live there. I'm like, Chloe didn't look like that when I lived there. Um, but I called the uh, non-emergency um, police number and reported it. And I confessed that I trespassed and they didn't seem too concerned. Um, but we think like hunters are using the abandoned house to hunt the deer um, that are in the park behind uh, my old house. So it wasn't the hallmark moment <laughs> I was aiming for. It was, uh, yeah, it was pretty awful. Pretty awful. So that's how we left Pittsburgh with that uh, memory in my daughter's mind of like mommy's shack of a house with, oh, you know, um, rifle racks on the wall. And, and it was the, uh, I think Thanksgiving starts either Thanksgiving day or the day after. And this was like a couple days after. I think it, um, hunting season on the deer had started. So there weren't any rifles on the wall, so maybe they were out hunting. Whoever, and maybe, um, it didn't look like there were power in the house, but we saw like um, cereal boxes and donut boxes. And uh, there was a bed, like this really crappy looking bed in the dining room. So somebody's obviously been sleeping there. Anyway, I reported it and uh, Ruined my childhood memories of my old house. All right, so colors layered. We got our cell activator. Hopefully that's enough. I got my, what is this? I have a Conair Infinity Pro. It doesn't say how many watts, but it does have um, high and low, hot, warm, and cool settings. So I'm gonna put it on cool, and I think I'm gonna do, do higher right off the bat. So. Uh, we're going to try just go straight this way and then I might add more cell vac activator flip it around and do this side so Oh boy, wish me luck Maybe we'll, maybe we'll start on my got all wonky right here but otherwise that looks pretty cool I'm not so sure I need more cell activator it's sewed up kind of like a bloom does I wish I had more in the black but we'll see uh, what happens when I flip it around so that was let me hold it up so you can see that was pretty successful where's my little stand and let me, do I want to add more? I guess we'll try it without adding more black. Because it looks, it, it's hard to tell. I'm going to try it without black. And if we need it, we'll add it. give that a second to settle down and see I'm gonna blow in here and see if I can get like some of these cells to pop up and I'm gonna wait a second because um, I feel like it needs to come up under the puddle again too uh, gosh I love the colors with this though very very dramatic and let me look at my lines. I feel like straightening out some of my lines um, with like a popsicle stick. Let me grab one. All right. 
So, can I do anything right here? Can I just straighten this out here? Where else? Right in here. Even if I lose some uh, lacing, that just needs straightened out. Kind of like that. Maybe this guy too. Off you go. Some little cells. All right, nothing seems to be happening. There, there's actually black cells that you guys probably can't see, like a row of them right here. And the copper with the pink and the black made bronze in here. So I'm gonna just give a little blow. See if we get anything to come up. Mm, some are. Hold on. Mm, a couple little babies. I might leave it like that though. One thing I do like is that it's not completely in the center. Like the center is like right in here. So it's a little um, asymmetrical, which I always like. And let me see if I can tilt, move things down a little, pour a little paint off, a little that way is good. And then bring it back this way. That's cool looking. I'm pretty happy with this, y'all. Oh, that helped the, the, the center a great deal. So I'm gonna turn it that way because that's the orientation I would see. So this would be 12, six, that way. So this would be 12 o'clock and that end would be six o'clock. Um, and it's very, very shimmery. So yay, that was fun, that worked. Really cool colors, too. I really like that copper color a lot. That's pretty awesome. And let me get you guys down. So come up close. Some cell work there. The middle part. Kind of loving that, right? And I like that I have cells that are colors and cells that are white, like mixed. Like they look very balanced. There's this, oops, going off there. Come up kind of high like that. That's what it looks like. Pretty happy with that. Liking these cells coming in here. We'll see what happens. I might give a little blow and encourage that side um, to get something to rise. But I like, like right there in the black, how it's getting little cells popping up. So, and then, I already showed you that guy there. Pretty happy with that one too. So yeah, where am I? Uh, um, just wanted to say today too, like extra, extra thanks for the love and support. Um, I'm on an eight day selling streak which I'm always flabbergasted when someone wants to buy my art, you know, every the, the self-doubt all the time. So eight days in a row is just amazing, amazing. I don't expect that to happen um, ever again, honestly. So thank you guys so much um, for validating my work, I guess, and uh, for all the lovely comments. And I'm gonna cry, so I'm gonna go. You guys take care, I'll, uh, I'll see you next time, bye.